Deva Deva Sai Deva Mi Divya Charna Vindamulku Na Prima Puraka Shatta Kodi Pranahana Dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, Sairam to you all. I was just a boy of 18 when I came to know of Swami. Just at the time I was finishing my high school education. The United States is praised as having some of the greatest institutes of learning in all of the world. And in fact, I had many good teachers. But I never got the one thing I wanted. My educational training never gave me the answer to my one burning question. Where should I find happiness in this world? How can I sustain happiness in my life? In America, young people go off to college in search of jita, looking for more and more jita, higher, higher salary. But they're not looking to elevate their jivatam. They're not looking to elevate their lives. Education for me really truly began at age 18 when I came to know Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Many people say that America is a very rich country. There's no poverty in America. Everything's of plenty. But that's wrong. America's full of poverty. Sure, poor people may have air conditioned homes, cable television, and cars, one or two. But the poverty we suffer is a poverty of happiness, a poverty of values. Only Swami can come and solve the problems of our educational institutions, be they in India, Africa, or in the West. Once Swami asked me, what is Sai education? I was totally unprepared for the question. And out from my mouth I said, having faith in God. And Swami said, yes. But I had a doubt. In the secular West, it's not easy to talk about God. In fact, by law, we can't talk about God in public government schools. And so I put this doubt to Swami, and I said, Swami, it's difficult to talk about God in America. And Swami's answer was something beautiful, something that stayed with me. He said, God is just a word. God is just a word, he said. And then he went to talk on, not God, but the first part of the equation, faith. Faith in God. Swami went on to emphasize faith. Bhagwan explained, faith is required for every single person in this world. It is not just a religious value. It's a human value. Families can't operate without faith. Family members have to trust and rely upon one another, believing in one another. Organizations likewise can't operate properly without the value of faith permeating all of its employees. Swami has also said that even atheists live lives of faith. In fact, they find peace and go to bed at night contented only because they have faith that tomorrow the sun again will come up and they can go on living their lives. Faith isn't a religious value, it's a universal human value, Swami emphasized. From this moment, I took two important lessons. One, faith is an essential tenet of Sai education. And two, that, Swami's, that Sai education is universally applicable, just like Brother Khanu said. I'd like to share a little bit of my experience. Faith. The philosophy of Educare is predicated on this principle that each and every single person is an embodiment of divinity. 
We as educators then have the task of bringing that divinity out. That's the philosophy of educare. But in practice, the real children who come into our classrooms, they don't always look like embodiments of divinity. They come with a whole host of problems. The world's trampled upon their lives, and they come into our classrooms looking this way. But we sometimes separate the children and say, these children are good, but these children are not good. I can teach these children, but not these children. That's the moment when faith is most required of us. Not only should we have faith in our own divinity, but we have to have faith in the divinity within each and every child. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, from my own experience, unless children believe that we believe in them, they'll never move one step for us. No growth is possible, no transformation is possible. I'll share an example from my own practice. The school I teach at is a public school, a government school, and it has incredible economic diversity. It has some of the richest children in our entire city, and it has some of the poorest children in our city, all within the same building. Our school has the practice of separating those children. Better, better performing kids go into this class, lesser performing kids go into this class. Wealthy children end up at the top, poor children end at the bottom. The top bracket, they're given rigorous instruction. The best teachers are in those rooms, and every child's being prepared for college. The bottom track, the new teachers, less experienced, less prepared to handle the challenges of teaching children teaching watered-down curriculum with low expectations and almost no preparation for these children to advance themselves and move on to college. I argued to my colleagues. I said, fellow teachers, every single child is capable of meeting high expectations if we first expect them. And so we, I co-mingled these children together. I won't say it was easy. It took a lot of time. It was a lot of struggle. Struggling children needed extra help, extra time. But by the end of the year, when we had our final examinations, our classes outperformed all of the other classes. Is this Bhagavan's miracle? It's nothing more than Swami's teaching. That we should have faith in children. Without believing in children, nothing is possible. The second teaching is I took away from Swami that day. Sai education is universally applicable. It is not just for Sai devotees. It's not just for India. Just as Brother Kanu said, it's for the entire world. But many of us have that doubt. God is just the word, Swami said. Yes, God is just the word. God can be, but this divinity can be signified by the five human values. Truth, right action, peace, love, nonviolence. Aren't these divinity no less? Have we compromised God by calling him satya? Have we diminished God by calling him love? No. The five human values, this is the avenue to reach each and every child on this planet. I, a small example, with my children, I one day put to them Swami's well-known saying, do good, be good, see good, Swami has guided us all these years. I put this to my class. I've done this multiple times now. And then I just asked the children, children, which of these comes first in the development of a person? Which should we do first? Should we first see good in order to do good and finally be good? Or should we first do some good in order to become good and ultimately see good? Always the same thing happens. The children immediately start disagreeing and breaking into small groups. No, I think first we should see good and they all start working it out and discussion erupts and discussion and discussion and discussion and the same result has always come whenever I've done this with children they ultimately all realize, you know, Mr. Hoffer, the truth is, 
doing good, being good, and seeing good cannot be separated, that these are integral, that all of these are connected to being good, that they all discover. And that's always, always happened whenever I've done this one simple activity with children. Swami's teachings are absolutely applicable in every single corner of this planet. Bhagwan, the world's children need you desperately. Those of us that are working with children, we see these children, and we know that we alone can't do this. Institutions aren't going to do this. Governments aren't going to do this. We pray, Bhagwan, that you will lift up the children of this world. One last story. One time I was in Brindavan, and I was standing with a group of boys outside Tri Brindavan. Swami came outside of his house and just drifted down the ramp. And he walked straight up to us and he held down his hand and he said, what is in my hand? We were just quiet. We could see that nothing was in Swami's hand. And I'm sure more than one boy thought just that. Nothing's in his hand. And Swami started to repeat, nothing's in my hand, nothing's in my hand, everything's in my hand. Everything's in my hand. Everything is in my hand. Swami, we're all in your hands, Bhagavan, and nothing needs your help more than our institutions of education. I pray, Bhagavan, that you'll take us in your hand and lift us up and save us all from the suffering. Sairam.